Welcome to Vanadium. This is Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. From Knight Rider, where Michael almost lost Kit to a pit of quicksand, to Lawrence of Arabia, to G.I. Joe, to even the Smurfs, just about every movie and TV show from the 60s until the 90s featured the threat of quicksand. MacGyver had to deal with this stuff several times. Atreyu lost his friend and horse Artax to quicksand in the swamps of sadness in The NeverEnding Story. In The Princess Bride, Buttercup falls into quicksand, and thank goodness Wesley was there to jump in and save her. Even goofy sitcoms like Perfect Strangers had to dedicate at least one scene to quicksand. It became one of the most worn out tropes in all of Western popular culture. Quicksand scared me when I was a kid. The idea of sand turning evil, the earth itself becoming man-eating, was too much. I didn't like to screw around near anything that looked like a desert, a dune, or a sand pit unless it had a boardwalk on it at the New Jersey shore. I have never and will never let anyone bury me in sand at the beach. But is this mysterious, scary stuff, quicksand, the real thing? The threat is a bit overblown, but quicksand is definitely very real. There have been deaths, and the stories are terrifying, even though it doesn't work quite the way it does on TV. Quicksand is so real, even NASA engineers considered the threat of quicksand on the moon before the Apollo mission. They were worried astronauts would land on the lunar soil, only to be swallowed up. Quicksand is a silent monster anyone could stumble into, and without quick thinking or assistance, never get out of. Quicksand is a test of mastery of fear. How do you tolerate the feeling of sinking without panicking? Imagine thinking of everyone who died in that pit of quicksand, being added to the accumulating dead remains of those who never made it out. Panic would almost always find a way in. Struggle would turn to desperation. The body would try to pull loose, but the mire would pull back. These non-Newtonian fluids, like quicksand, don't follow the rules of liquids and solids. Typically, quicksand is a thixotropic or sheer thinning material that appears solid, but when your weight hits it, its viscosity suddenly decreases dramatically. The solid ground becomes a liquid when stress or weight is applied, and it will let you sink deeper when you struggle. Trying to push or pull your way out will just liquefy the solid under your hands. There's nothing solid to grab onto. It just turns to liquid. The harder you fight, the less it matters. Quicksand can also be dilatant or sheer thickening, which is just the opposite. The harder you push on the quicksand, the harder it pushes back. What a horrible situation to find yourself in. Drowning in something and you can't even tell if it's a liquid or a solid. It's so confusing. It's like drowning in fear itself. But in the end, quicksand is heavier, denser than 1.1 grams per cubic centimeter, the density of the human body. These weird non-Newtonian effects might let you sink in a little or even get stuck, but the laws of nature are on your side and that heavy quicksand will eventually spit you out. Quicksand, like a lot of obstacles or threats in life, can definitely destroy you. But it doesn't have to, and usually won't, if you keep a level head. You don't panic, and remember the universe loves courage, and a solution is usually just a thought or two away. Quicksand itself isn't a substance, but really more of an effect. It can be demonstrated with any granular material like sand, clay, or dirt, and it usually, but doesn't always, require water. Dry quicksand is a real thing. The effect has other names, liquefaction, fluidization. Most of the time, the quicksand effect comes from sand nearly saturated with water, in which case it becomes a strange liquid, sheer thinning or thixotropic. Under certain conditions, wet solid sand will flow easily like a liquid when it's shaken, agitated, or put under stress. The sand may even take some time to return to the more viscous solid state. This happens because the material is composed of granules with combinations of different sizes and shapes. Their packing and arrangement 
determine the way the whole body of particles flows. Quicksand can spring up when there's an earthquake. Sufficient agitation and vibration applied to the wet soil can lead to liquefaction or a temporary fluidization of the dirt. The soil particles all line up under the stress of an earthquake and the whole structure becomes easily deformable and fluid. In some cases, even without water, just from the arrangement and collective behavior of the particles, quicksand can occur. The dry quicksand effect comes from a loose packing of sand or soil, resulting in a very low density, low viscosity, easily flowing fluid. In some instances, the density could be lower than that of the human body. That would be not good for any unwitting pedestrians in the area. In dry quicksand, anyone would just sink like a ship's anchor and never have a chance. Writing in the scientific journal Nature, physicist Detlef Loos and his co-workers in the Netherlands described an experiment where they allowed air to flow through very fine sand in a container with a perforated base. Then they switched off the airstream and allowed the sand to settle. The researchers found when they dropped a one and a half inch ping pong ball from just above the surface of the sand, it sank to a depth of almost eight inches. Dry quicksand is very strange, but very real. During the planning of the NASA Apollo moon missions, quicksand on the moon was considered as a serious potential threat to the expeditions. The successful landings of unmanned surveyor probes a few years earlier and their observations of a safe, solid surface only somewhat reassured NASA about the threat. The large plates at the ends of the legs of the Apollo lunar module were designed to reduce the danger of quicksand by reducing the stress on the moon's surface. By all accounts, everyone was quite relieved when the astronauts didn't encounter any moon quicksand. Here on Earth, quicksand deaths occur sometimes in grain silos. These horrible accidents are known as grain entrapment deaths. Workers become submerged in the superfine flour. As a powder, it's composed of narrowly distributed size granules, loose and poorly packed, leading to low density and thixotropic behavior. The starch powder flows easily when it's agitated, allowing someone struggling to become more and more submerged. I believe quicksand may be responsible for the disappearance of some ships in the Bermuda Triangle. I realize that sounds a bit deranged, but let me make my case, and I didn't come up with this theory by the way. There's a phenomenon when methane ice turns to bubbles under the ocean, which creates a rising foam. This foam is much lower density than the water itself. A bubbling methane foam would be just like liquid quicksand swallowing up ships and dropping them straight to the bottom of Davy Jones' locker. Air and water can be quicksand, sometimes, in a way. Materials get strange when you mix them together. Sometimes the medleys can't decide if they're liquids or solids, and sometimes even change their minds about their state when they get agitated or under stress. The world is a mysterious, fascinating, frightening, horrible, and wonderful place. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.